Hi, thanks for joining us today. I'm Ronica Lewis, I'm a Google Cloud Product Manager. And today I'm joined by MLB. With me from MLB is Felipe Negron. Felipe, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, I'm glad to be here. Awesome, thank you so much. So Felipe, please, for the folks who are tuning in who haven't had the opportunity to meet with you, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your team. Sure. My name is Felipe Negron, and I've been with MLB for the last three and a half years. I'm their director of systems engineering, responsible for all cloud orchestration, automation, DevOps, and SRE functions. I have a team of 13, and that's comprised of pretty much what I just described, systems engineers, DevOps engineers, and SREs. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. Felipe, today in this Q&A breakout session, I'd like to talk about the evolution of MLB, um, and then just, you know, how empathy engineering has impacted uh, MLB and, and their footprint. So let's jump right into it. So evolution of MLB, uh, day zero for you guys. Take us back to your unique perspective, right, as you were going on this app modernization journey. Uh, sure. So like I said, three and a half years ago, I joined a team. And when I joined, I was tasked with um, migrating um, a, a bunch of um, systems into the cloud. Now, a lot of these systems were working on legacy environments. And so uh, it, it was not just a, a migration, but it was a replatform. And in some cases, we did some lift and shift. Um, initially, we were migrating into a single cloud, but soon we realized that we, uh, we wanted to build into multiple clouds. And so we had a multi-cloud strategy. Um, the, the challenge there is we had to move a lot in a short period of time. So it was important for us to pick the right tools, to pick the right technologies to, to get us there. And I think that's when we looked at Kubernetes as a container platform, um, allowing us to build a consistent uh, build and deployment pipeline and deploy into uh, multi-clouds uh, at the time. That's awesome to hear. And so initially you guys started off with GKE on-prem and then you started migrating. Um, into bare metal clusters in your stadiums. Talk to me a little bit about what that experience was like for you guys. Well, before we got that, there was a lot that went in between, right? The, um, it was important for us to set up our cloud foundation properly. And so um, as we looked at GCP and started building out there, we used tools that allowed us to get there a lot faster, tools like Terraform. Uh, we built our CI CD platform uh, on top of our GitHub and on, on top of Argo. And, 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 and in doing so, we were now easily deployed into the cloud. So that gave us the opportunity to look into what we're doing on our data centers and our on-prem ballparks. And we say, you know what, we like this. We, we wanna be able to consistently deploy the same way. And that's when we introduced Kubernetes in, in, into the ballparks. At the time we were rolling our own Kubernetes, but for those who run Kubernetes, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. So uh, when we start talking to uh, our Google reps um, and, and telling them the challenge, they, um, they came back and um, you know, a, a few years later came back with, with Anthos. And so we started using Anthos in our ballparks. Uh, what was interesting is uh, we started with Anthos on VM, um, but we, we wanted to, to do better, right? Uh, we didn't want that uh, the hypervisor challenge on top of a hypervisor. So we, uh, we challenged Google again to see if they can give us something more in line with running Anthos or Kubernetes in bare metal. And that's when we uh, deployed Anthos on bare metal. So Felipe, it, it sounds like GKE was working for you guys initially, right? With the team and everything that you had going on, your workloads, and then you extended the cloud um, and the ballparks, right? With bare metal. Um, talk to me about what that impact was to the fans, right? And even to your broadcasters who come to the ballparks. So yeah, so at, at our ballparks, we we actually had certain workloads that we were running there, but we we're running them on VM. This was before Kubernetes, before GKE. But we, we saw how powerful Kubernetes was for us in the cloud, right? It, it gave us that consistent way to build and deploy, or regardless of, of cloud or regardless of, uh, you know, the underlying operating system. It, it was Kubernetes. It, it was the same whether we ran it in the in the cloud or on-prem. And so we, we started rolling our own Kubernetes clusters um, at the ballparks. Uh, but for those who know how to run Kubernetes, you know it's not for the faint of heart. So there was, there was a lot of overhead. Um, so we, we talked to uh, Google, we, we, we explained the situation and we told them what we were trying to do. And they came back with Anthos. Um, initially it was Anthos on VM, 
But over time, they came out with Anthos bare metal. And that's what we have re deployed across all our ballparks. Now, deploying this to the ballparks allows us to now run these applications across our um, environment in, 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 in the ballpark. And, and that's important to us because it's low latency. We can have network connectivity problems, but because that stuff is running in the ballparks, we can still serve our, our partners there. And so it, it was critical for us to make that shift to Kubernetes and even more importantly, um, make that shift to Anthos on bare metal. I like that. Yeah, I, I recall one time you sharing with me that, uh, you know, hey, it went down uh, in one stadium and just like clockwork without a hitch, no one even knew uh, another ball park actually just picked right up where it left off. So that's really good to hear about the latency um, for you guys. So I, I want to kind of get further on now. So you're a little bit longer, uh, further along in your journey. Talk to me about now what the team uh, makeup looks like and then what the infrastructure you kind of intimated a little bit about, about that, but why has that changed now with the growth of the team and the evolution of MLB? Well, nor what we wanted to do on the tech side allowed us to build a team so that uh, we could execute and, and execute a lot faster. So my, my team of 13 engineers, they're, they're all senior, right? And they have, they, they're pre-programmed to no cloud um, and, and, and they didn't have the uh, Kubernetes experience or the cl uh, cloud native experience, they do now, right? So um, it, it, focusing on that skill and going after the, 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 the market to bring those skills in was a, a lot easier than say, hey, we need a database guy here and a systems guy there and this guy there. It's, it, it, it made the process a lot easier. Now we're sort of doubling down, right? Everything's Kubernetes, everything's cloud native. And so we're focusing on the tools to make it easier for our software engineers to, uh, to, to use the technology but more importantly, not spend time trying to figure it out. Instead, spend the time on building new products. And that's what this has allowed us to do. Yeah, I, I love that too. It sounds like the technology uh, ease of use allowed your engineers to focus on things that were more meaningful to your, to your business's bottom line. Uh, continuing on with that, I'd like to talk about, you know, you and I, we've had so many conversations this year. We, we were even discussing, you know, multi-cloud now as the future platform strategy for MLB. And we were really going down that road, but then something changed and you guys went all in on GCP. Talk to me a little bit about that. What, what happened and what changed for you? So early in my journey, at least here in MLB, we were excited about multi-cloud because of what Kubernetes gave us, right? The ability to consistently deploy, and I've said it several times already. And so now it was realistic. But as we started going down that path, we, we, re we quickly realized that um, it, it's an investment and not just a monetary investment, but the, the skills that you need to, to run on multiple clouds, the complexities you have to build into your applications in order to run in multi-cloud. So we, we quickly pivoted and say, you know what? Um, yeah, multi-cloud is it's fun as a technologist to, to, to achieve, but is it, is it realistic, um, especially with what we want to do with, with our products, uh, how we want to build new and innovative ways to engage our fans. Um, and so we sort of went all in on GCP because we had a lot of the tech we needed there alone to be able to get there. Yeah, multi-cloud definitely has a couple of factors uh, that make it either work for you um, as a strategy or sometimes maybe that's not the best strategy for you, depending on things that you mentioned, right? Your your workload factors, your team dynamics, and even other strategic factors like, you know, the digital experience uh, that, that maybe your fans may be pushing. Um, you know, I, I'd love to talk even more so now about, you guys have a robust GCP footprint. You're using a lot of, uh, our, what we call our first party uh, uh, services, you know, Cloud SQL, PubSub. Talk to me a little bit about how those things are enabling and accelerating uh, innovation for you. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a recurring theme here, right? It's basically, let's not worry about this sort of stuff so we can continue to build products um, for our fans and for, for, for the game of baseball. And that's basically what we do, right? It's, it's, it's hey, let's use this service that we click a few buttons and now we're up and running versus let's figure out how to build it and manage it and support it and make sure it doesn't go down. Um, it, it's, it's a no brainer, right? And so whether it's Cloud SQL or your memory store services or something as simple as uh, GCS buckets, 
these are all services that, um, you know, they're, they're robust. They have the SLAs. And guess what? We don't have to manage because Google, Google does it for us. And so that, that's important, right? Because um, running this technology is not easy. But if you guys help us run that part of it, it makes it a lot easier for us to focus on what's important. Yeah, I love when we ha had the aha moment around Antho Service Mesh and uh, Managed Control Plane, right? So uh, I know you guys are not yet on that, but talk to me about a little bit about your excitement um, as you guys prepare uh, to take advantage of some of those. Well, as you know from all our conversations, I often say, hey, you guys always put out something that I've just finished developing internally. Um, and, and I think that's what Anthos Service Mesh did, right? When, when you mentioned it and we were telling you what we did to get around some of the challenges we, we were having. And we're like, oh, what can you come out with that like six months ago? And, and that was the aha moment, whether, you know, it's, it's what we're doing with security and PCI or what we're doing to extend our services across clusters, across regions. Um, you know, the, these are the challenges that we have. And as a result of us talking about them, you guys are coming out with the solutions um, rather quickly, actually. So Felipe, what would you advise someone or what tips would you give someone who's on this journey, right? In the same kind of breath that you are on this journey and, and where you are now? I would say that don't get caught up in multi-cloud this or multi-cloud that or on-prem this, on-prem that. I think you should have a strategy. It's important to have a strategy, but the technology is allowing us to blur the lines between what's cloud and what's on-prem. And so if you pick the right technology, um, you know, the, the, the cloud provider of choice is going to support that. Um, it's just what everyone's doing. And it's, it's, it's what Google's done for us, right? We've extended our cloud onto on-prem and now we have a cluster uh, or a set of clusters across our ballparks that we can move workloads to. We're running hot in the cloud. Let's move it onto the ballparks. And with the technologies like Service Mesh, with with a lot of different uh, products that Google's coming out, it's making it easier and easier to sort of seamlessly shift traffic in and out of um, our clusters. And so, yep, yeah, don't get caught up. And then, lastly, just have the right team to support your journey um, because that makes a, a world of a difference. And 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 Google made that happen, uh, made that easier whether it was through training or through engaging their product managers, um, my team is better for it. And as a result, we can continue to innovate in this space. Felipe, that's uh, brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us today for the insight into the evolution uh, of, of MLB. Uh, happy to hear you know, all of these things that you're sharing with us. And I look forward to the next blogging. Thank you so much again. Awesome, thank you.